it came from the Jack Parr show. Uh, from the Jack Parr show, these guys, Edmonds and Curly. <laughs> Edmonds and Curly, very good comedy team. They had their big bit was this dentist thing they used to do. Well, anyway, they travel. And at that time, we only worked in the village. We worked on the, you know, going on a trip for us was like going on the east side. That was like a little road trip, you know, because we were on the west side. So Evans and Curly were on the road. They went to like South Dakota, North Dakota, Iowa, this and that. So they saw my shot, and they were friends of mine, and they saw me work at the at the improv. And they said, man, you should be doing, you know, some more stuff. So they got me some dates on the outskirts of town, right? They did, they did me a favor to do that. And I did another Jack Parr show. They were supposed to do warm-ups for this show along with a guy named Mike Preminger. They couldn't make the warm-ups. Mm -hmm. They said, why don't you get this guy Jimmy Walker to do it? I said, well, you know, is he any good? You know, because they were doing a show called Carlucci's Department, which is really a show, and I say this every time I do an interview, it'd be a great show to do now. It's about an unemployment office and just the wacky people that come in there. And they had James Coco, Candy Azar, Jose Perez. They had a legit cast. You're right. I mean, these are legit people to do it. So they said, why don't you get Jimmy Walker to do it? So I went in there, and it was good money. It was like 400 bucks for the day. And you had to be there for like six hours just to, you know, smooth the crowd. And it was a CBS show? CBS or did, show okay. way over on like 57th and 35th. Way okay. to hell yeah, over, yeah. way over there. So I went over there and I started doing my act. They didn't want you to do that. They, they like you to do like mingle with the crowd right. or whatever, whatever. And I did my act. And luckily there was some, there was some gigantic laughs. And you could see the director and the producer like going, what the hell's going on out there? Because they're getting ready for their show. Right. And it came to a point that they said, Maybe this guy can't be with us because he may be stronger than our show. You're you know showing him up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so this woman comes up to me and she says, I've been watching you do, you know, whatever. You're very funny. She said, I'm a casting director for Tandem Productions. And I went, good for you. And I left. <laughs> and she says, no, no, no. We're doing a show on the left coast or the, the west coast called Good Times. And I said, yeah. She says, Esther Roll, who I did not know who that was, right. Esther Roll is the star. She's from Maud. And had you watched Maud at that no, point? No. Okay. No, I had not watched Maud because Maud comes on, I think, on a Saturday night where I'm working. That's right, right. Okay. So I don't really watch Maud. And it says he's, she's doing this show, and we'd like to have you be on this show. In this business, people lie so much all the time. If I had half the lies that people tell you, I wouldn't even be sitting here. I'd be too big for you guys. I wouldn't even be sitting here. He says, we would like to have you, you know, on the show. And I go, yeah, well, let me know when it's happening. So she came in the next week. She says, yes, we are going to do the show, this and that, that and this. And next week I'm bringing Norman Lear with me. And I went, yeah, okay, good. And, and I didn't know who Norman Lear was. I had no idea. Norman Lear comes in and he's there and he watches me do my little thing and Luckily, there's some big laughs, and he comes up and he says, welcome to the family. And I went, yeah, okay, thanks. And I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. So he says, we're going we're gonna to draw up a contract. We're going to have business affairs come by and do whatever. And I went, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, I'm getting my, like, my 400 bucks for this. This is terrific. I'm good, man. What are you talking about? And I'm getting good spots at the improv. What's this guy talking about? So... I said to the guy, he said, give me your address, I'll send you a contract. And I said, this guy's full of it. So I gave him the improv, the address, because I didn't even believe that or whatever. I said, yeah, whatever. So I come in early, and Louis the Cook is there. And Louis's another angry guy, because he's like Raymond and everybody else, Raymond Johnson. And Louis says, you got some mail here, man. <laughs> I go, Mail? Who the hell is emailing? What? I'm not emailing. Who the hell is mailing me? What's that? And it's official, like, real thing. I Certified go, letter. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. real deal. And I said, oh, okay. And it's a contract from Tandem. And, I, you know, I'm on the show. 
And I went, what the hell is this? So Brennan looks at it, he says, it's like a contract for a show. So we had this guy who used to sit at the end of the bar, Kenny the Drunk. <laughs> and Kenny the Drunk is at the end of the bar, and he's a lawyer. He has like an office on Fifth Avenue. He's like a real guy. But every night, he'd come in, nice and clean cut, about 5.30, and just start putting down shots. And by 9 o'clock, his head was on the bar. He finished a whole fifth of whatever the hell he was drinking. And I said, I need a lawyer or something to look at it. He said, well, Kenny's down there. And he was in every night. And literally, I picked his head up off the bar. And I said, Kenny... What the hell is this? And he put on his peepers. He says, this is it's a contract. <laughs> and I said, well, is it any good? He says, yeah. And then his head went back on the bar. I swear to God, that's exactly what happened. Kenny the Trunk was there. I went, oh. So I said to Brennan, what, should, what, what do we do now? He says, well, maybe you should sign it and send it back. I said, no, oh, okay. So I signed to send it back. We get a call at the improv. J.D. Joe, who's Norman's secretary, says, we're going to send you some tickets to come out to the coast. We're going to do some rehearsals on this show. And I went, rehearsals on what show? He says, show, good times. You sign on, you, you're in. You know, oh, okay. So Evans and Curly got me some dates. And I was in like Vermilion, South Dakota. I was in Fargo, North Dakota. I go out and I'm doing these dates and I'm the only black guy in town. It's like a novel thing in, in South and North Dakota. And so I'm getting big laughs. There's chicks coming around, whatever. I get a call and it's J.D. Joe. I'm in Fargo, North Dakota. And she says, where are you? I said, I'm in Fargo, North Dakota. She says, you know you're supposed to be at uh, <laughs> the CBS Center down here on Beverly Boulevard. I said, what's going on down there? Why am I there? He says, well, you're on a show. I said, what am I doing on the show? He says, well, you, you're, you're acting on the show. <laughs> I went, really? He says, yeah, you have tickets and everything to come out. I said, I do? He says, yeah, we sent you tickets in New York. Did you get the tickets? I go, I, I, I don't. So she says, where are you now? I said, I'm in Fargo. She says, we're going to send you tickets from Fargo to come out to the whatever. So I'm on the thing. I'm in the car with the other acts. This guy, Michael G. Smith, who had a record called Bluer Than Blue. And I'm Bluer Than Blue, Saturday Night Saturday. This is the first time. He was on the show, a couple other guys on the show. I said, hey, guys, stop by the airport. There may be a ticket for me. I don't know. <laughs> let, me, let me see. So I stopped by the airport with these guys. And they said, oh, yeah, you have a ticket. You're going to Los Angeles in about three hours, whatever. I went, really? So I go pick up my bags. And I said, guys, I don't think I'm going to be on the show right now. I'm going to go do this, this TV show. 